Okay. Hey makeup friends, it is new release time. I'm gonna be taking a look at 12 items that have either just recently hit the market or that are going to be arriving soon. I'm ranking them from least interesting to most interesting based purely on my own preferences. So let's get into this. All right, before we start the video, I wanna welcome you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and on my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional F-bomb. Really quickly, eyes are the new mini love palette from Natasha Denona. Lips are Sava from Natasha Denona as well. I did film the look. I will be doing a review soon, but I don't have a timeline in place just this moment. And then the last piece of housekeeping relates to my little pineapple, which by the way, I feel like she deserves a name. So feel free to leave some suggestions down below. You guys really seem to like her, but right now she's not feeling the best. Her batteries are just a wee bit dead. Uh, so I have ordered replacements, but I just wanted to let you know she's gonna stay white in the background. I have had comments in previous videos saying, you forgot to turn her on. I haven't, she's just, she's dead, so. That's sad, uh, but replacement batteries are on their way. All right, now, as with my previous ranking systems with the new releases, this is purely subjective. If you have them in a different order, that's frankly to be expected and totally fine. So if I have ranked something really low in terms of my own interest, don't take it as a personal affront, please. It's not, it's just for my own personal preferences. I'm just not interested. It's me, not you. All right, with that out of the way, let us start the ranking. So coming in, last place for me this week are these new lipsticks from Too Faced. Okay, first of all, first of all, these are called the Lady Balls lipsticks. Just let that marinate for a second. The Lady Balls lipsticks. Now, I wanna to read to you what it is that Jared Blandino in all of his infinite wisdom has said about this release. Uh, we're shooting a new empowering video today that's sure to give you lady balls. From the very beginning, Jeremy and I set out to create a brand that would empower everyone to become the best version of themselves in every moment of their lives. A company that would make you feel the most yourself in our brand and that makes you feel loved, seen, and celebrated for being your authentic self. Today I give you a sneak peek that I hope will give you confidence to grab life by the lady balls. Where do I start? Where do I, where do I start? Um, so if we don't want to read too much into it, we can just say lady balls is really super cringe. There, I said it. You disagree, that's totally fine. But for me, I don't like the phrase lady balls. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. It ranks right up there with moist. I don't know why, I just don't like it. But let's take it another step further. To try to say that in order to empower somebody, they have to get lady balls is sexist at its core. How do I describe this? So we take a female, we give her male testicles, and that is what gives her power. Do we, do we see where the disconnect lies with that? And frankly, not to be that person, but if we're looking at anatomical features that make somebody powerful, testicles are not ranking high up there for me. I mean, one kick to those and you can fell a man for hours. A womb, on the other hand, that creates life. That's pretty effing powerful. Now, I've also read comments on this release post as well, and there are a lot of trans women who take issue with it, saying it makes them feel uncomfortable, and for a brand who's talking about empowerment and inclusivity, to then go ahead and exclude a portion of the population in such a blatant and stupid way, it really speaks to just the thought process behind this, and frankly, I don't think there's much of one. I just happen to think that Jared Blandino likes the phrase lady balls. He even has a shade of his other lipsticks named lady balls. I think he thinks it's cute. I truly do. I don't think he's naming this line of lipsticks maliciously. I just think he might be an idiot. Either way, 
I'm not interested in buying a lipstick tube that has giant letters saying lady balls all over it. I'm just not into right. that. Next up, another item that I have zero interest in, and if it's possible to have a negative level of interest, this kind of fits the bill, and it's the new sets from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. They have just recently released, they're available on her website. They range in price from $25 for a set up to $65. That looks to be some liquid lipsticks or lip glosses of some sort, some sort of powder product. I don't know, the details aren't all that specific, and frankly, I'm sorry but I don't care enough to go to her website to check it out to see exactly what it is. I just don't. I think it's very uninspired. Like, oh, hey, it's Valentine's Day. Let's release red lipsticks. Okay. I mean, don't put too much of a spin on it. And I just, I, I'm still salty about the whole lipstick release. I'm over the fact that, like, there was something seriously sus going on with those lipsticks. I don't care about that that much. I mean, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the driving issue. The driving issue is how she handled that as a brand owner, which was to say she didn't handle it. I don't really think we can argue on that point. She disappeared. She removed herself from social media and went into hiding for months after all this came to light, rather than owning it, taking it on head on, addressing the issue, fixing the problem and reassuring her customers that it's never going to happen again. Issuing full refunds and doing a voluntary recall would have gone a long way for me to have faith in her as a brand owner, but as it is, I have highlighters, I have red lip products, I don't need hers, and I have no interest in purchasing them. All right, later on, we are gonna talk about a picture that just does not do the product any justice. But for now, let's take a look at the KKW pick because this is objectively beautiful. The flowers, the staging, it all looks beautiful. But then you take away the props and you look at the products that are being released and it's just another boring ass KKW release as they pretty much all seem to be. They're all basically variations on the exact same theme. I have not really discovered anything from her brand that has ever made me kind of like sit up and take notice. Everything just like flies well below my radar. I have these kind of palettes a million times over in my collection and there is absolutely nothing about this collection that piques my interest aside from the promo pick. But when you place your order, you're not getting those flowers. You're not getting those props. You're just getting some boring ass eyeshadow palettes. So I am not going to get sucked in, but I will give her team A for effort with these promo picks because they are beautiful. All right, so hitting the Sephora website on February 8th are new products from Marc Jacobs. So there's going to be the Extra Shot Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. I believe that's like a duo product because I'm only seeing one tube. And then there's also some trios here, the Omega and 3, Omega times 3, Omega X3, I don't know how to say it, Omega times 3 powder blush bronze highlight palettes. Holy crap. Can we just call it a face trio? Like that would just be much easier for me personally. There's also some new eyeliners. I'm not too interested about them. Okay, so the claims on the caffeine concealer and foundation, you can conceal and perfect. It's caffeine infused, creamy full coverage, Long wear, increased resistant, natural looking, instantly conceal dark circles, blemishes, and redness. A buildable foundation for a visibly smoother, more even complexion. Has an oversized applicator for quick all over coverage. Blends seamlessly for skin that looks brighter, revived, and re-energized. It's available in 30 shades and it's going to be $39 US for each bottle. The trios are gonna retail for $49. They are coconut scented and they come in limited edition packaging inspired by swirls of cream and coffee. I will say the packaging is very pretty, but I just not sold on this. I'm not. I have not had very good experiences personally with Marc Jacobs base products, like foundations and whatnot. It just, they just don't work for my skin for whatever reason. So I'm not like super jazzed to try this out. And the face trios, while the compact itself is beautiful, I'm just not wild on the shades that are in here. I think if they had switched the two highlighters, I think it would have worked a little bit better just in terms of skin tone that they're aiming for. These aren't really bringing anything new to the table to begin with. And in fact, I have Tantastic as a giant bronzer anyway, so I really don't need these trios because I'm guessing, I mean, it's called the Tantastic Glow, so I'm guessing that's what the shade is in here. 
Yeah, our favorite bronzers, Tantastic and Tantalize, with satin sheen blushes and soft shimmering highlighters. So I already own a third of one of these trios anyways, and for 49 US, I'm not gonna be picking this up. All right, now we're moving out of the realm of like, I object, and now we're just into things that's like, if it showed up at my door, I'd be super happy, but I just don't think I'm gonna buy it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of meh to me. So first up is the new palette from Beauty Bay. This is the new Romantic uh, eyeshadow palette, and there's some um, liquid eyeshadows as well. The palette is pretty, but I don't need it. It reminds me very much of the Huda Beauty, the new rose, whatever the hell that one was called, the most, what the fuck was that called? Ah, this one, the Rose Gold Remastered Palette. There are obvious differences, but overall the same kind of color story you can find in here. I don't know, this one has more punchy options, but at any rate, again, it's not really filling a void. I did get their Book of, Book of Shadows, Book of Magic. I, oh my God, hold, Book of Magic. This one here, this one released in the fall. Again, beautiful color story, like beautiful, but I'm not super wild on the shadow performance, to be honest. The mattes are fine, but the shimmers do crease over the course of the day, and I'm just not about that life. I have a ton of palettes where that doesn't happen, so I really don't want to fill my collection with palettes where it does happen. So this is one that, you know, if the like makeup gods just dropped it on my desk in front of me, I'd be like, okay, let's do some looks and play with this thing, but I'm not going to pay the money for it. Next up is from Ofra, and this is their new Ride or Die collection. It includes what they're calling blush zers are bronzers and blush in one pan and it comes with a liquid blush. I like the idea of the liquid blush. I don't like the idea of the split pan. I'm just not a big fan of those and without being able to really see what the dimensions are, I don't know how easy it would be to get a brush on just one side versus the other, what they're going to look like when they're swirled, all of that kind of thing. I do think the colors are really pretty and I like that they have a good range of depth with their shades but this just isn't something that I'm particularly interested in. I am, however, interested in trying Ofra because I've only ever tried, I think, one of their, no, I got one of their liquid lipsticks from Ipsy and then I got the trio that Jen Love created with them. She sent that to me in PR, which was just so wonderful, so nice of her. And I really like the formula of their liquid lipsticks, but I've never tried any of their powder products. So if you have recommendations from Ofra, please let me know down below because I do have my eye on them just not on these particular products. All right, coming in at number seven is the newest Naked palette from Urban Decay. So, I just, I kinda wanna just say to Urban Decay, like stop trying to make Naked happen. It happened and then it died. You guys know it died, you held a funeral for it and then you just continued to pump out more Naked products. So what was all that about? I just, I, I it's, it's done, it's gone. It's a blip on the horizon. Let's focus on something new. I was really excited when they came out with their Stone Vibes collection last fall. That seemed to be something new, something innovative. It breathed new life into the brand for me and really piqued my interest. But this, not so much. This looks like the color story that would have, you know, wowed people three or four years ago, maybe even five. But now it's just, it's being done. It's tired, it's over. I don't think it's necessarily a bad color story, but it's certainly not one that I feel any compulsion to add to my collection. If I do pick this up, which is a very large if, but if I do, it's purely for the purpose of review. It's not because I have any burning desire to actually own this palette. I like the two teal colors in there. There's the darker matte and then what looks to be a more shimmery kind of light aqua. But aside from those two and maybe that really deep rusty red, the rest of them are all like being there, done that. There's really nothing exciting going on with this palette. I don't know. I just, I want to see Urban Decay do well, like I really do, but I feel like they're just sort of limping along and they just refuse to innovate with the exception of that Stone Vibes collection. And then every now and then they do stuff where you're just like, what, what are you doing? What, what is this? Like they just, they come out with really weird random releases that don't make an awful lot of sense. They do have some bangers out now though. I will say, I have been thoroughly enjoying this. That's the Stay Naked Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. Jesus Christ, it is a foundation, but it's, it's beautiful. I love this. But, I mean, 
Game of Thrones. They had the Game of Thrones palette and they dropped the ball in epic fashion. Like I just, I don't understand what goes on in their creative development team meetings. Like I just, I don't. Um, I picture like Benny Hill music, to be honest. But this one just, well, it's not like offensive. It's just, it's highly forgettable. I just feel like this is the kind of palette that a year from now, nobody's gonna be like, oh, remember that naked, naked, whatever the hell it's called? What is this? Naked Wild West, Naked Wild West. Do you not just picture a bunch of naked cowboys running around? And that's kind of fun. That's more fun than the palette. And that's saying something. Now, a palette that does have far more visual intrigue for me is from Odin's Eye. So they have just released their Norns collection. But as of the time you're seeing this, it is available on their website. So there is a large palette, there are three mini palettes, and then there are some highlighters as well. And I think the highlighters look beautiful. They're so unique looking in the way that they're pressed into the pan. I think it's really, really beautiful. They're the kind of thing that would like hurt my heart to actually use, but I think they look gorgeous. The mini palettes, one of them looks to be all shimmers, and then there are two that have a mix of shimmers and mattes. The green one on the bottom left draws my eye more than any of the others. The large palette, while I have heard from others that this quality is incredible, when I look at it, I just don't see a lot of looks coming together in my mind. While there are some really pretty shades in here, specifically looking at the blues and teals going on, it's just not a palette that I can really envision myself using over and over and over again. And so I'm going to give this one a pass, although I do have my eye on that green mini palette. Okay, and now we're moving into the range of products that I can conceivably see myself spending the money on. First up in that category is the new mascara from Makeup Geek. This is the Extension Effect Mascara. There is also an eyelash curler and there are some bundles available as well. The mascara itself is gonna retail for just about $13 US and the eyelash curler is going to be just under $8. So the price point is very good. It claims that it's a volumizing and lengthening mascara formulated to make your lashes look like extensions without the cost or upkeep says that it has a matte finish, it's high coverage and water resistant and claims a 24 hour wear time. The brush looks like your traditional bristle brush and then I will include the before and after pictures as well. In looking at the comments underneath the post, a lot of people are saying that the before and afters look very subtle and they feel that it just looks like a drugstore mascara with a markup, but flipping that sort of on its head, I'm glad to see that these look like natural results like they just use the mascara nothing drives me more crazy than when you see like a l'oreal mascara or whatever and then in like little tiny fine print it's like fillers were also used or like whatever there's all artificial lashes attached as well to simulate results and you're like well what what is the point of this then i may as well just buy false lashes if your mascara can't do this why are you pretending that it can so i'm quite pleased to see that she's actually used realistic looking result pictures here now, while I'm not necessarily interested in the eyelash curler, it's just a step that I like literally never do. I never think to curl my lashes before I apply mascara, but I would be curious to try the mascara out just for the lols, frankly, just to see how it is. I think it's nice to see her come out with something new in her line. What I think would have been really cool though is releasing multiple colors of mascara, especially in the day and age of wearing masks. It just gives us something a little bit more creative to play with. If wearing bright eyeshadow isn't necessarily your thing, at least you could add a bright blue mascara or bright yellow or something of that sort. I think it would have been nice if there had been a range of colors available. I understand the marketing decision to just release the black, see how it does before investing in colored formulas as well, but from a consumer perspective, I think it would have been really neat and a little bit more exciting to see a full range of mascaras available rather than just the black. But I can't really argue with the price point, so I don't know that I'm gonna go out and just specifically order this just to review it, but the next time I do place a, ma a Makeup Geek order, I could see myself adding this to the cart to test it out and see how I get on with it. All right, next up is a palette from Violet Voss. This is the All of You Forever palette. It's available now on their website and it's retailing for $34 US. I, okay, so there's a couple things going on here. One, I do like the overall color story, but, calling it an olive palette, 
eh, it's a little bit of a stretch because really there's only one green in here. There is another shade that they describe as being a green, the one on the far left of the swatches, but to me that looks more brassy than it does green. The only real green that I see is the one on the far right. So I would have liked to see some matte olive shades or like a deep forest green mixed in there as well. Some more, just some more matte options in the green family, whereas they've stuck with a lot of more rusty tones and browns, which I think do complement the olive shade very nicely, but they're calling it the Olive You Forever palette and there's really only one olive shade. So I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity there. I think at least a matte olive green shade would have put me over the top and actually pushed me to purchase this. But as it stands, as much as I think it is very pretty and I really do like the Oliver, <laughs> the olive, <laughs> the Oliver, <laughs> I crack myself up. As much as I really do like the all over color story here, it's just nothing particularly new, but had they sprinkled in more olive shades, and like I said, the matte olive for sure, I definitely would have been adding this one to my cart. As it stands, I think I can take it or leave it, but I, I do think it's pretty. I just, I would have liked to have seen some more green shades in there. Now, I'm gonna bring you back to what I was saying about the KKW picture and how beautiful it was. And when I launched into that little spiel, I was saying that there was a picture we were gonna talk about that was just like so uninspired. And that would be this one here from The Ordinary. This is for their new Ordinary Concealer. It's available in 36 shades and it is available now on The Ordinary website. And in fact, I actually did go ahead and purchase it. And spoiler, I really like it. I think it's a very nice full coverage option. It wears well throughout the day, blends out really nicely, and does provide really good coverage. I said that. I said full coverage. Regardless, I really like it. This picture, though, would not have sold me on this product. I don't really understand what's going on here. I feel like they've glued the tubes to the wall. I... I don't know. It's, it's available in 36 shades, so why they're only showing, like, eight, I don't really understand, but... Hey man, if you ever go over to my Instagram page, I shouldn't be talking about flat lays because I really don't have that skill set either. Regardless, it's neither here nor there. It just makes me kind of giggle. But I paid $5.90 for this concealer and it ranks right up there with my more expensive concealers as well. I have been testing it out. I do intend to do a video on it at some point, but I've really been putting it through its paces and I've been wearing it on one eye and then testing it against another concealer on the other eye just to see what the coverage levels are like and how they both perform over the course of the day. So I'm sort of gathering intel on that and I will be sharing my thoughts in a future video. But I did want to include it in here because it is a new release and it's one that I do recommend. Okay, so then that is going to bring us to the product that I am the most excited about and it's coming from MAC. I am so pleased to see them release a collection where it just makes sense. The packaging is on point. The shades aren't just all new repromotes. They've clearly given thought to this collection and I think it looks beautiful. And that is their Black Cherry collection. So this collection is available now in China, but I have confirmed with somebody who works at MAC that it will be coming to Canada at least in March of this year. So if it's coming to Canada, I imagine it's also going to be arriving in the States at the same time. I am very excited about this. I think it looks beautiful. The packaging is gorgeous. The shades of the blushes, I don't know how I'm gonna to choose to be honest because all five of them look beautiful. They also have lip balms in stunning packaging. And again, all of those shades look beautiful to me as well as the lipstick shades. So I really am not sure how I'm going to decide. And in fact, I may just blow my entire budget on this because I think it looks beautiful. Suffice it to say, I intend to purchase at least one blush, one lip balm, and one lipstick. I think the packaging is gorgeous. I think the shade selections are perfect, and I'm just really, really excited about this. I have not been this excited about a MAC release in ages, and it's really nice to see them actually come back to that point where their collection as a whole is exciting. So I'm really, 
really looking forward to getting my hands on some of these items. All right, so that is going to do it for this week, guys. As always, I would love to hear from you in the comments. What items are you particularly excited about? Which ones are an easy pass for you? All of that good stuff. But for now, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.